Hi, and welcome to another edition of the SOS Show with James Law Jr., the video version. And also, this will be podcasted audio, too. So if you're listening to our voices, hi there. I'm glad you're joining us. <laughs> I have somebody I love. She's laughing already. I'm making her laugh already. Um, a clear path is her business. She's an author, international speaker, entrepreneur, and she is a NAPO member like myself. And she is my soul sister, Dr. Regina Lark. Hi, Miss Regina. <laughs> Hello, Mr. James M. Lott Jr. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love you. I love you. <laughs> so I'm so glad you're here. So I, so I, I talked to Regina, and as some of you guys know, I've been producing a lot of content and talking to people in various parts of my lives, of my lives, um, and just producing well, content out there. You know, you know I do 10,000 things. So <laughs> I'm talking to different people, and I'm just going to create content this t- during this time period while we're at home and while we're trying to be careful and safe and keep our, get our minds off of the thing that's happening every once in a while, which is very smart to do. So this is a conversation with my girl. She's at her house, I'm at my house. First question, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Uh, sure. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a real scrappy person. So yeah. Yeah. I just keep trying to think of shit to do <laughs> <laughs> during this. And, yeah. uh, and I have projects, I always have some kind of project, so. Which you do um, always anyway, besides yeah, doing this I, stuff, you always do. I, I call this the new temporary normal. Yeah. It's not the new normal. It's not going to last. Right. And uh, that tends to assuage my sense of anxiety about it. And um, I've taken good care of myself financially. Yeah. And I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm very grateful that I'm not walking in fear today. Uh, I started my company at the beginning of the 2008 recession. Me too, me too. I know, (laughs) and here we are 11 years later. So that tells me uh, I'm scrappy. (laughs) But I could could do shit in the face of adversity like that. And and, um, so, so I'm good. Thanks for asking. What about you? How are you? How am I doing? It's, this is a great, I'm, I love that you said that because it's just a, a great reminder that we can make it through um, yeah. times that aren't the greatest. Um, you know, people know I went through Bell's palsy. I was down for almost a year with that and I came back. Um, I started the recession like you did. Everybody said, you're crazy. You start, you're leaving your corporate job to start a business. Are you crazy? It's like, I'm like, I am crazy and I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yes, oh I'm hell yeah. yeah i'm like yeah i'm crazy um so i like you said that for me too i feel like i like this is the temporary normal not the new normal because i feel like too at some point we'll get back to the way it always happens that way you go do something tough we've been through war and we've gotten back to our lobby it's like it will happen at some point right. when i don't know but right. it will happen i'm okay i live in a big house i have a giant garden if you guys know me i have a giant garden I'm very fortunate to be able to go outside in my garden, to walk around in my house, my little tiny right. apartment. Like some people are really like, you're not, you live in a house. I'm like, well, I am. I, I know I feel lucky for that. But on the flip side, I have not left my house as of this recording for eight days. No. Um, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I don't have to leave, that I don't have cabin fever, that I don't have a place. I'm, I'm actually using that to my advantage. That, that's why I'm taking the warnings of outside and saying, stay in, stay close right. to home. And you know me, I'm doing... 80 different projects. I know. <laughs> hey, you want to, uh, we live so close to each other. You want to um, do a six feet apart walk this weekend? That's so funny. We, so, we should do that, shouldn't we? We should. Okay, we'll talk about that. I want that because I'm like, yeah, because I, like, I, I haven't left the house yet. I, am, yeah. I think maybe I should leave the house at some point. I should. Yes, you um, do. You need a little color. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I feel, I do. I feel a, little, a little pale. Oh, this says prison pallor. Let's get a prison pallor. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a little dark. I'm a little dark. Um, I want, to, I want to tell people, if they don't know the story, I, I, I laugh every time because I rem- I'm reminded how we met. And I mean, before we actually met, met, but the, the message you left on my phone, I had it for the longest time. Uh, I changed phones, I lost it. But folks, you're about, God, I'd say now about four years ago or so, I met um, then President Ellen Fay, mm-hmm. and, um, and we talked and we got in contact, she called me. And then a few days later, the scrappy, curly-haired, I didn't know this yet, but you know, Lark calls my phone, leaves a message, and it's so funny. You're like, why don't I know you? Why don't I know, why aren't you in my life? Why don't I know you? Let's have breakfast. 
<laughs> and I'll never forget that. Like, I didn't know you yet. But when I, but now that I know you, like, that's completely you, Regina. And then we met, and I was all like, we called on the phone, we talked, we got along on the phone, and then we met up to that cafe over there in Culver City. At bre- we did have breakfast, folks. We yeah. Metro uh, Cafe. I, and I fell we'll, we'll always have the Metro Cafe. <laughs> we'll the Metro Cafe. I fell in love with you. I fell in love with you. I fell in love with you. I got gotcha. you. Um, you know, it's two spirits that I'm surprised we hadn't collided before then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I mean, like, so what were some of your first impressions of me? When, I mean, you know me now, but like, what were some of your first impressions of me when you met me? Oh, um, if, you, if you can remember back then, uh, larger than life, humble, um, needful of my friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And vice versa. Yes, yes, yes. I, you were just somebody. I, 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 I don't exactly know what. Um, uh, I think you had interviewed or done something with Ellen right when she became president. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did. And, and then she said something about you online, and and I'm thinking, who the hell is this guy? Is and. <laughs> I, I, there was, I don't know. I, I, I am that person. I will make calls. You do, she like, does. Yeah, you don't know me. And, uh, uh, but you, 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 um, magnanimous, gregarious, um, uh, giving, you know, you, I remember at that first breakfast, you said, whatever you need, you know, and, um, and I didn't know you know you. Like, I, I've come to find out. Um, you're a publisher. You're a singer. You're a songwriter. You're, you know, what the hell? You, you, have, you have this amazing group of people all around the country who love you for your work with the soap opera community. And I don't know if I've ever seen a whole soap opera, ever. I think maybe one episode of General Hospital when... Luke and Laura were getting married, and I yes. and I know the song. Yes. Um, but uh, soap operas are not in my in my um, purview. So, uh, and then the gift is that we live probably within five miles of each other. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you, I went to tell people why I love Regina Lark, and so and I can almost start crying, but I'm trying not to. I think you're super, super, super smart. And that to me, that's so attractive to me that mm. we can talk about, and we have, talk about anything. Like from clinical stuff to organizing stuff. To, I learn from you. I learn things from you when I talk to you. And that's very important for me, I found. I'm finding as I get older, it's important for me in my exchanges um, that I need that from people. I think mm-hmm. I need. I need, to, I, need to, I, need to, I need to get something from somebody. And a lot of times mm-hmm. it's knowledge, I guess. I didn't know that when I was younger. I didn't get it as much. But now I'm like, I do need that in some of my friends. I want to walk away with something. Right, right, right. You know, also, you are very supportive. I know you're very supportive of my abilities and what I do. And um, I can talk to you about anything. And I can tell you anything. I can talk to you about anything. Um, and you get it. Um, and like, you're like, oh, I understand. I see what you're saying. Oh, I get that. Oh, like, I see that. And like, some people just don't, they're closed off. They don't, they just, it's my feeling and how I feel about something and that's it. You're like, you're open. And the thing is, you're also like me, where we like education. Yeah. I mean, I admire you so much for all of the different, you know, certifications you have and how you continue your education to this day. That's I very admirable. That. And you're super sweet. And I call you my soul sister. I mean, like, you're just like, you're like, probably part of the family. Um, but, and, you, and the one thing I do appreciate is that you check on me sometimes. If you haven't heard from me for a while, when I try to check on you too, but like, you'll be like, Hi, right, just call and see how you doing, friend, or what's going on. You give me a call, and you'll call me, and and it's fine. We don't have to talk every day. I mean, that's I mean, some people do, right. no, but that we pick up right where we leave off. Yeah, yeah. It's never that's like a true friend, though. Yeah, and, you know, you know, I'm here for you. Know, I always say to you all the time, whatever, what do you want to do, whatever you need. I'm always, yeah. I just feel that way, and I think, I, I love, I, I just love the fact that you're a person who wants to live life. You want things out of life, and then you want to. Um, continue the learning process. Mm. That's anything, like your life, just like anything. And yeah. so I just, I just, I, I love you for all that. Thank I, you. I do. I mean, yeah, and we should tell people you. more and more what we like about them. I think people, yeah. we're so, especially us organizers and solopreneurs and entrepreneurs, we're so in our own satellites 
right. doing the work, doing our thing. We don't have offices where we're with other people. Right. And yeah. the well, there's no water cooler in our life. <laughs> no, water cooler. Oh my God, Regina Ricard, water cooler. Oh my goodness. I love it. Taking it back. Uh, but we don't have that. We don't have that. We just don't have that. We, so to get together is then when we do get together, that's where you kind of can, you, we should tell each other how we feel and how, you know, you know, I'm an emotional person. I tell how I feel all the time with no shame, you know, as I have to have shame. No shame at all. Um, so, I mean, so I was going to say, ask you, because you like me been in this business 11 years. Um, how do you keep things fresh for yourself in this business? How do you keep, how do you like, okay, I'm going to still do this. Like, how do you keep, uh, how do you adapt and grow? Uh, that's a great question. I, I, at first blush, I would say I am, uh, I'm out and about all the time. In my company, I'm the rainmaker. And I am uh, not doing as much hands-on organizing work but that's how I planned it. I started my business when I was 50 years old. So even though you and I have been in business for a long time, I'm 10 years older than you. Yeah. So I started at 50 and I knew by the grace of the goddess, I was one day going to be 60. Yeah. And I knew at 60, I wanted to have the choice of whether or not I was gonna haul a hefty bag over my shoulder. At 60, I wanted to show up at the job site, bring the pizza. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, and and uh, I, I almost said something really awful. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, okay, yes. I was going to bring the pizza, grab my crotch, and say, I'll take that hefty yeah, bag for exactly, you. Exactly, exactly, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me get that for you. Uh, so and yeah. and uh, not because I had to, because I wanted to. So with that in mind, I built the company always thinking, how do I scale this? So it was a very conscious thought from the beginning because I also knew that a professional organizing and productivity company, hokey smoke, we serve, and you've heard me say this before, every swath of life yes. from womb to tomb, I love when you say and that. Then, and then every part of every arc of life, every every area of life is where we are needed at different parts of people's lives. And so I knew that people needed me in, in a, they needed our services in a variety of times in their life. I also, um, I also knew that education was going to give me the language and the understanding of who these clients were. Uh, I also knew that um, uh, at some point my body was going to change, <laughs> even though I am an incredibly strong and healthy woman. I. Um, I, I I work out. Uh, uh, I mean, very I'm active. I'm, I'm, very, I'm active. very very active. Yeah. Golf and tennis and gym and all of that. Uh, I knew that at some point my body was going to change, and so I wanted to be prepared for that. So all of this, you know, just doing the um, the thirty thousand foot view on my life at the age of fifty as I knew I was going to progress into 60 and 70, I also understood, and I think this is something that is pretty cool for the life of a professional organizer and productivity consultant, the work that we do, the companies that we build, the work that we do, the companies that we build can take us through our entire life cycle. So when I started this, I was laid off from a job at UCLA and I was teaching community college. I was a, a, a professor of history and women's studies. And when I was laid off, uh, I kept one class and then started creating a clear path. At the beginning of every semester, and I taught for about 
five or six years after I, after I started A Clear Path, at the beginning of every semester, I always told the story to my students about why I was qualified to teach my class. And as I moved into this world as a professional organizer, I would always tell them, I said, look, I don't care what your major is. If you have the gift, we have a gift. If you have the gift of spatial clarity and acuity and organizing and all that, I said, I don't care what your major is. Become a psych major and business minor. Start building your business in your undergraduate years. Do your friends' garages and, and bedrooms. Take before and after pictures. Build your own website and start transitioning your professional path. Once you graduate, you've got a business. And so in your 20s and 30s, you're building your business. You're, you're meeting with the, with the um, folks at SCORE and SBA. You're learning about your money. Uh, you're, you're tracking your numbers. And at some point in your 20s or 30s, you may want to start a family. And if you have built this in such a way that um, you are profitable, then uh, your employees will now be doing all the hands-on work. And say you, you are um, doing unwaged work from home as a, as a part-time um, uh, parent, part-time professional. And, uh, and say in your late 30s, you want to get back into the field so you can transition back. And say you, you grow a queendom, right? And you've got, you've got a lot of employees, your numbers are looking good. And about 50 or 60 years old, you transition into speaking and writing. And so what we do can take us through our entire lives. I don't know what retirement would look like, because I already play a good deal of golf and tennis. So. She does. I don't. You do. I don't. You do. That's <laughs> and, I, and I take a great vacation every year. But I think as I get older, my goal is to um, be more uh, on, on the speaking circuit. That's I've true. got um, one book that does well. I'm working on two more right now. So again, there's just no end to what is available to us in terms of business growth and development. It's, it's taking the classes, putting yourself a, a ahead of the herd, uh, establishing credentials that nobody has in your community or area. Yeah. And it's um, thinking of multiple streams of income. I just finished my speaker's website. It's called speakingofclutter.com. I like and that. it's going to go, uh, it's going to be geared toward this book I'm writing on emotional labor and organizing. Oh, yeah, so yeah. again, there's just no end. I mean, it's limitless. Yes. I'm glad you said that because, and I'm going to say this to you organizers out there, because um, I'm getting lots of emails and private messages. Running. So James, now I'm interested in doing videos or now I'm interested in doing, I'm like, you know, and me and Susie Hamey laughed about this um, when I had her on my show the other day. And I was saying, you know me, I've been screaming about technology for a long time. And how, I th for, in my opinion, this is my opinion, folks, that a lot of NAPO members are behind in technology and behind in kind of the social media thing, technology. There's a little behind, there's not as, as strong as some other industries are on there. And I come from Hollywood, so I know that they're on there and they're always, right. you know, I, so that's kind of where I come from. So my approach is that, there's so many things you can do for your business. Right. You don't have to follow Regina or follow me exactly what we did, right. but there are other things, and there's other right. things you can try. It's just, it just, it's, it's, it's almost endless, I guess, on some level. I guess it's kind of like the ceiling is really, really, really high. Yeah. You can, you can do stuff, and I think it's all about looking within yourself and allowing yourself to think of other things you can do. I mean, there's, I mean, some of you out there are very talented and very creative. You can't apply that to your business. You can't apply that. <laughs> organizing. I mean, it's, I'm on TikTok. I have an organizing show on TikTok. I mean, I, I didn't. I don't of think course it, you do. Of course, it's always that. Of course, I said I do something. But, but, but what I did is I took this popular, hip, young platform, and I bent it to my will. I said, I'm not going to do the dancing videos and all that kind of stuff. I do how to get super organized under a minute. And I post these videos, and they do like thousands of views. You know, so it's like, and I draw them back to my business. And so there's things you can do. Right. Like, but I'm getting lots of phone calls now about this kind of, and, and you, Regina, 
I recently, I mean, before this, this stuff was going on, you started doing um, Facebook Lives. And I know yeah. that wasn't the most comfortable for you. And you said that, no. I'm, like, not most comfortable. No, so, I, I mean, hate uh, it. <laughs> I don't hate it, but I mean, but how, how has it been doing them, though, for you? For well, you? I, I'm, I've been out as a speaker for a very long time. And uh, like many speakers, I feed off my audience. Yes. And so I can see somebody's face or crossing the arms or people light up. And, and I, just, I just draw on that. This has been a bit different in, I, so the first time I did it, I was so focused on who was joining the call, who was, who was, who was alive with me. And I'm like, hey, hey, hey. And uh, the second time I did it, I don't think anybody showed up. But I did a couple of them last week and really, I was focused and calm and centered and I knew my purpose was to be of service. And I just talked to folks about that's stuff that they But that's the do. lesson, girl. That's the lesson. You said, yeah. Yeah. I'm, still keep, I'm gonna still keep going. You didn't say after the second one, screw it, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. You said, now you got, you said you got calm after the first one's a little nerve wracking. Yeah. You got calm, you got centered, you became yeah. present, and then you're just like, now nah, I can actually just, I'll just do it and see what happens. And I, and, and there was nothing to memorize, and it was, I had, I had maybe five or six bullets of what I wanted to bring up, and I, and I went into it knowing if I didn't even bring a single one up, it was still going to be a successful Facebook Live event, and now I have material to repurpose. Um, I know you're the king of repurposing material. What, what I am, what you're reminding me of, it's like, I got to start a podcast just to freaking interview you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or just let asked, me interview you on your show. That's what I think we'll do. Oh my God. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. do it. I would love that. I'm a good interviewer too, Mr. James M. Love. Oh, I'm, 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 I would give my, I would give myself to you. No, um, I have that kind of podcast. <laughs> Um, but I mean, I would literally. I would love it. And put you in my and, and be in your hands. I would. Let's do. We'll do that. We'll set I interviewed up. Um, forty. What was it? I interviewed several dozen Japanese war brides <laughs> when I was doing my dissertation. Wow. So I have a whole technique. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, well, I mean, I'm not a Japanese war bride, but I've, I've, I've been. <laughs> I had the whole interview thing. I'm going been, down. Obviously, I've been in the trenches, but I mean, that's another story. But, um, <laughs> that, that, that's that's a, actually a great idea. It, it was it was funny because um, I am getting interviewed more now, and it's a, it's a weird thing because I'm the interviewer. So I'm like, for me, right. I'm getting people are like I've been with Smeet a couple of times, and the Naval right. Podcast interview me. Like, so I'm always curious what people are going to pick out, because I do so many different things. I'm yeah, very yeah, curious yeah. what they're going to focus on. And it's always different every time, which I love. It's always, I, I don't get the same question asked twice. Well, okay, one. There's one question I ask. But the rest is always very different. And so I'm very curious. I'll be very curious to see what you, because you do know me a little bit, and you do follow me. Be curious to see what you pick out and what you decide to do. But I'll totally give in. I'll totally give in mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. I just want a little nuts to we got to set that up. Um, but it's weird for me, because I'm used to the one being in control of the, conversation and so I know, you are. I know so it's kind of nice to let go and say okay you ask me whatever you know I'm honest I'll answer whatever you tell me you ask me I'll answer and I think that's um I think for me you mentioned something about um retiring and stuff I feel the same way I don't know I mean because all the things that I do I can do till I'm dead I mean like I literally can do them I mean I could be a, I could be um was it um uh, Andy Rooney and roll me up until I can still host shows I mean like I mean so I'm 100 years right. old and with the organizing thing too, I am doing less and less physical organizing. Hands on, right? Hands on, and I am doing more speaking, more teaching. I mean, I make Michaels and do all these other things. I'm like, because I recognize my body ain't the same as it used to be anymore either. I mean, I'm not an old hen yet, but I'm not a spring chicken either. So it's like I'm just somewhere. In between. <laughs> I'm like a middle rooster or something. I don't know what's going on. Fixing my metaphors. I don't know what's going on. Um, I am college educated. I swear. Um, but no, I, I just think I, I'm. I'm I like what you said, how you were always kind of prepared. I'm starting to prepare now. I'm a, maybe it's I'm 50. I'm starting to now prepare for the next 10 years and say, what right. does it look like for me? I don't know what it looks like completely yet. I'm working on right. it. But I am making steps of like, do more speaking engagements that have 
I can charge a higher right, rate. That right, does right, cover. Right. You got to think of it though. That is, that's, that's a very interesting. I'm very proud of you getting your speaker website done. I got quick to see it because I haven't done mine yet. That's, that's next on my list. I, I think I have a lot of friends who have speaker websites and they're just wonderful. I just think it's, and she's a good speaker, folks. This is something we see with our friend Leslie Joselle, didn't you? Yes. You guys did a co presentation somewhere. Yes. Was it where, was, where was it exactly? I can't remember where it was. That we did it. We, yeah. did, we did ours at NAPO. Um, we did one, uh, the prequel to time management, we did at NAPO. Uh, 20, we're in 20, 2019. Okay. And uh, we have another one that we were supposed to present at an event at the end of April, which is yes. fine. Yes. But uh, this is called Organizing um, for, I, I don't have the exact title in front of me, but it's Organizing for People with Special Needs and Abilities. Oh, okay. And it's a fabulous presentation. So once things settle down, we'll we'll be talking about where we can do it online and, and that kind of stuff because okay. we put a lot into it and it's really, really a good um, piece of work that we've done. What are you doing with Naples these days? What is, what is your involvement these days? I mean, around, I'm, a a me I'm a member among members. Everybody knows Regina Lark. They all know her. They all, <laughs> everybody knows her. They all, seriously, I mentioned her name. Oh, yeah, we love her. No. They, know, they, know, they, know, they know you. I mean, you are up and through Napo. I am. I am. Uh, I'm a member among members. This is my first full year, coming to the end of my first full year of uh, not having a role. It's and because uh, I've been, I was with the Napo LA board from the time I started, so from 2008 to 2015, and then in 2015 I joined the national board. Yeah. And I did four years on the national board. Three were. Um, the, the years that I agreed to, and one um, was to fill in a year that they had an opening. I think that's when Mindy Godding uh, ran. She was a member director, and then she ran for uh, secretary. So I finished her year. Okay. So it's been a, it's been, it's been an interesting transition because I love knowing everything that's going on. That's why I, I join organizations and I get very involved oh, yeah. right away. And part of it is because I want to see who the players are. And part of it is because I want to know what the hell's going on before anybody else does. I understand that. And, I understand that. and uh, I've always been that way. I mean, always uh, as an adult, that's yeah, yeah. kind of been my MO. So, uh, so I, I was, I was disappointed when, the conference was canceled, the April you. conference was canceled uh, because it would be my first big foray in being a member among members. Uh, I had submitted a conference proposal that was not accepted and that made me feel sad yes. and um, left out. Yes. But I pulled myself up, I'm like, you can do this, Regina. Yes. And then, um, uh, and I was, uh, I was a little, I was kind of scared to show up because on some level I felt, who am I now? Interesting. Okay. So it, it was, yeah, but I'm good. Yeah, no, no, it makes, it makes sense. The fact that you've had these roles for so long that now you're yeah. not really having a role. You're not teaching there. You're not speaking there. It's like, oh, I'm, just, I'm coming as Regina, basically. Yeah. Not as speaker of this course at this right, course, right. Or this board or, thing. Yeah. Board member yeah. or, you know, yeah. anything like that. It's so like you're a civilian. Great. Like you're a civilian again. I'm a civilian, but I also transit I now I'm really involved in um, the LA chapter of the National Speakers Association. Oh really? Oh wow. Yeah. And I'm I'm playing around with that now. So Wow. Tell me a little about them. Because I've heard of them, but like what's what kind of what have you gleaned from them so far as you've been getting involved with them? Uh the contacts are amazing. Okay. The education is awesome. And uh, they, uh, I, I joined what they call their member academy and it was about how to grow a speaking business. I'm, 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 I'm a good speaker. Sure, I, sure. Uh, but a lot of that has to do with years and years and years of being a community college professor. Makes sense. And so I was in front of the classroom all the time you know, dancing and singing and talking and educating and and so I have a I have a I have a a, a big sense of comfort um, to speak, 
but I didn't know how to create a business. And uh, that's, that's one of the things, that's one of the big parts of what I've gotten, but just the contacts and um, uh, that's good. Really smart, smart people. And uh, one of the, one of the um, instructors for the Academy, we're going to be getting together and I'm having a hell of a time coming up with a title for one of the books I'm working on. Okay. And so what's the, what's the I just about? gave him, and I'm good with titles. I love naming yeah, shit. Yeah. And, uh, but this one has eluded me. And so Dave and I are going to get together. I gave him a list of terms and phrases that would have to do with the book and we're going to start playing around maybe Venn diagram and, and, uh, I love it. I love but it. good friendships. Yeah. It's been great. Are you part of any other organizations? Besides oh, on that one? Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm on the board of directors for a local nonprofit called Opica, okay. which is, uh, um, it's a, um, a I want to say outpatient. It's a not outpatient. It is a um, memory care. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, a daycare for uh, memory patient, mem memory people. So it's it's um, uh, it's uh, folks who are caretaking uh, loved ones with uh, dementia and uh, to Alzheimer's. So early dementia to Alzheimer's, they can bring them to Opica. It's like a day day school uh, for older adults with memory issues. And, uh, it's a really wonderful, wonderful organization. I just started a three year board term for that. Uh, I've also been, um, I became, uh, very educated. I guess that's, um, with national association of senior move managers, NASM. NASM, we love those folks. And, uh, I, I became a certified senior move manager and then a clear path uh, earned the accreditation um, through NASM as a as an accredited senior move management company. So that was um, I invest a lot in credentialing and in membership. I just said it too. Yes, <laughs> you know I really do, and and I'm I'm a professional business owner, and to me because of my projected growth every year, what I want to do every year, I've got to surround myself with the people that are also looking, who are also working and growing and uh, educating and, and um, innovating. Um, it's who you surround so, yourself yeah. with. Who you surround yourself with is huh? very important. Who you surround yourself yeah. with is very important. I mean, it really does yeah. make a difference, folks. And I yeah. tell people laugh at me because I have a lot of letters after my name. And I saw I earned every single one. And, yeah. and you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a life coach in several accreditations and everything. And I, I, I love it. I mean, it's, it's added to my business. Or my business. It's added to right. my business and my life. But it's added to my business. And it's, I'm not just getting them just to have letters after my name. I actually am learning stuff. And I'm enjoying it. And the byproduct is getting the, the cherry on the topping is I get another credential of credentials that... I mean, it's good for marketing. It's good for a lot of things, but it's time to use it. Use it. Oh, you told me that you use them. I was always afraid to use them sometimes, but I used to run conferences, um, and I, people would say, uh, "You missed my my one set of letters." And I used to be like, "It's a set of letters. Like, who cares?" <laughs> now I understand. Now I get it. I mean, when I was um, so, <clears throat> pardon me. I have a PhD in history, and uh, so two things about that when. My last job in higher education, the job itself required me to have a doctorate because I was a director of programs at UCLA Extension. So the job requirement part of it was to have the advanced degree. And all around me, I knew a lot of PhDs that were in, in in jobs that were part-time and they were adjunct and they didn't get their full professor status and um, they were very, um, very negative. Well, look at, I got this PhD and what did that get me? And I've always been a proponent that you got to work it. You got to work right. what yeah, you have. Yeah, you got to do something, yeah. So when I left, uh, I was laid off from UCLA from budget cuts, the beginning of the recession. 
and two months into it, I start a clear path. My first set of business cards, I did not include the PhD initials after my name. And uh, it was a very conscious decision. And I remember in one of my first networking events, I'm talking to somebody and they happen to ask the question, oh, uh, professional organizer, I never heard of that. Do you need a degree for that? And they were very interested. And I said, well, not yet. <laughs> but I actually have a, a doctorate in history. And she looked at my card and she says, where is that? How come that's not on your card? And I said, well, you know, I, I don't do that anymore. And it's not relevant to what I'm doing now. And, and I said, actually, I, I, I felt like I had, um, uh, that I was, I was diminished in a way. I felt, uh, I felt a little ashamed. And uh, she looked at me dead in the eye and she goes, never again. She goes, you, you get rid of all the cards you have now. You put those initials on it. I've never not had my initials on my cards. And now I say it's relevant to my work because now it stands for piled higher and deeper. <laughs> uh, I like that, but I'm fun. <laughs> I love a good pun. I love it. I love a good pun. <laughs> so you take what you can and... And people see their credentials and they see, um, they see tenacity, you know, whatever you, what, you know, the ICD classes are fantastic. Earning your certification as a professional organizer, your specialist certificates for um, that NAPO has to offer, whatever NASM has to offer. I mean, people see that and they may not understand what CPO means, but it gives you an opportunity to talk about it. And by talking about it, you reinforce the education, you reinforce your intelligence, and you reinforce the idea that you're a serious business owner. I, agree. I could talk about that forever. Yeah, I know, I know, girl. I, and I agree with all of that. I mean, I really, I really do. And, I, and, and I've had people tell me, again, in my Hollywood side of life, like, well, James, showcase what you have. Showcase right. what you've done. It's, it's that right. whole thing of like being the peacock, so to speak, and put those feathers out and don't be ashamed. You worked hard for them. Right. And, and everything's relevant. That's the, that's the big right. thing, folks. It doesn't matter if I got, I got a, a certification in farm and ag insurance. It's still <laughs> relevant. I mean, AFIS, they do. I got to do everything. I'm weird. I do everything. Um, it doesn't matter. It's still, it's life experience. It's still relevant to what I'm doing today. And, and it's I have, what you take from it mm -hmm. and what you bring to where you're at today. I agree. I mean, researching and writing a dissertation i gotta tell you that experience is going to allow me to um produce this um book on emotional labor i just because of the the strategy i use then is this i'm i'm pulling out the strategy now and i did that in in the 90s so it's all relevant it's all relative I tell all the time, um, when I show up to a client, it's, I, it's everything I've done in my life right. to that point I meet them. That's, right. what they're pay, that's what they're paying for. So are you client, all you people out there like, I'm afraid to charge this. Like you're, you're paying for my experience as well as my expertise, but you're paying for 51 years of my life, basically. Right. That's it's true. Out. It's true. Very good. I ain't talk to you forever, girl. I went by so fast. We have to, we have to stop. No, we don't have much time, but I got one thing I want to make sure... Yeah tell your folks, and that is this. I am the co-author of a very exciting book called One Habit for yes. a Chronic Disorganization. I looked it up, I looked it up. Oh my God, it's so, I'm so, well, awesome. I'm so, yes. so I am looking for 97 contributors. I wanna get 100 people and we've got three. 97 contributors to write, uh, this is, it's, gonna, it's gonna cost you $250 and an hour of your time to be part of a best-selling book. And here's the deal. You're going to write a habit. What's a good habit that somebody with chronic disorganization may want to take on? And then 300 words on the wisdom of that habit. And then you're going to write an unhabit. What, what, what may they start to let go of? 300 words to the wisdom of that unhabit. The $250 buy-in is your prepaying 
uh, for 10 books at $25 a book. We are gonna schedule a June international launch date. So I have 99, with 100 contributors. On the June international launch date, we're going to be, we're, we'll have agreed to give our books, 10, uh, we're gonna prepay 10, take nine, hand them out to people we know, love, and adore, take pictures, post them. There's gonna be all kinds of fanfare around it. 900 books are gonna get passed around in a single day, and this is how we create a bestseller. And I'm working with a smart, smart entrepreneur by the name of Steven Sambliss. Uh, he loves the idea of chronic, he, he never knew about chronic disorganization, and now he sees it everywhere he goes. So. If your listeners want to engage in the conversation with me about this book, uh, this is a really good time for you to do some writing because we've, we've got a very different way of being in our lives right now. But thank you for the opportunity. Let me talk about that. I, well, I went and looked it up. And I actually, I'm following you. I'm following your One Habit page. And I'm following the main one. It's on Facebook. You go to Facebook, they're, they're on yeah. there. Um, I love the idea. I'm trying to, because well, you know, I'm writing like five books right now. So I'm trying to figure out if I can squeeze that in, because I love the idea. <laughs> I love the, you know me, I want to do everything. And I guess, I'm like, I love the idea, and I, but I'm, I'm writing a book series with one person. Like, so I'm trying to figure out if I can squeeze in a 300 word. I think I can. You know me, I can use 300 words. So, Mid-May. We're looking at mid-May for the final submission, okay. early to mid-May. Okay. So next week, I'll be um, pounding the pavements, reaching out to my NAPO and ICD colleagues, probably also um, clients. Yep. who uh, would identify as chronically disorganized, but have come up with strategies from working with us or on their own uh, to also submit. Yeah, it's a great, it's a, great it's, it's a fun thing. And they have one for all kinds of topics, but we want to go to- uh, And Debbie Rosemont, Debbie's been on your show? She was just on recently again. Yes, I love my right. Debbie. Well, Debbie is doing One Habit for Productive Home Office. Yes. So that. she's Debbie. looking for contributors too, so. Love, love me some Debbie. She was on my show a couple weeks ago, and she's been on my show before. Oh, yeah. I love I love Debbie. So she's like, we talk again. We could talk forever. She and I can talk forever too. <laughs> like all these talkers, I love it. Thank you, Miss Regina Lark. Thank you so much. Of I course, thank you. I love you. Tell folks where they can find you and your business on the social media. Uh, anyway. Regina at aclearpath.net. My website is aclearpath.com. There's also speakingofclutter.com, and there's also Silk Touch moves and relocations at silktouchmoves.com. Yes. And uh, my book that I wrote a number of years ago in its third edition is Psychic Debris, Crowded Closets, The Relationship Between the Stuff in Your Head and What's Under Your Bed. You can get it on Kindle. I have it recorded on Audible and uh, paperback all on Amazon. Yes. And of course, this is the Super Organizer Show with James Archinoel, special edition, a conversation with Dr. Joe <laughs> Lark. I am James Lott Jr., of course, Super Organizer. You can follow me where all James Lott Juniors are sold at James Lott Jr. <laughs> and all social media platforms. That's my saying I always say all the time. And of course, Super Organizer is everywhere, all superorganizer.com, a lots of help.com, which is two T's, not one. And you can follow my podcasts, my videos, everything I do everywhere where, where anything, anything streams. <laughs> There's YouTube. I'm literally iHeartRadio, Deezer. Uh, Spotify, Pandora, I am literally everywhere. Type in Super Organizer or type in James Live Jr. and my stuff will come to you. Everybody, please stay safe and sane. And if you're yeah. home, get organized. Eat, eat cookies. Eat cookies. <laughs>